Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or for those that are new here, hello, my name is Alicia. So today's video is going to be episode 9 of my calf rearing series, and it's all about what we do before we send our calves away. So we're going to be looking at tagging, drenching, vaccinating, and scanning. If you are new here, then please go click that subscribe button, it would be great to have you a part of the curl farm. So I have already made a lot of videos on calf rearing, so if you are interested in watching any of those videos then please go check those out. If you are looking at rearing calves on a small scale and you've got a small block then this is definitely the channel for you. If you've been one of those people that are trying to grab your calf and read the 15 digits off its air tag and write it down, definitely keep watching this video because I have a Nate tag scanner that I bought that is absolutely amazing and it is a lifesaver. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get into it. Alright, first up we're going to be talking about an important one and that is vaccinating your calves. So this is a 5-in-1 vaccine and it pretty much just protects your calves against all these common diseases that they can get. So calves need two doses of this to be fully protected. So we like to vaccinate our calves at around eight weeks old and then again at 12 weeks. So you need a four week gap between um, the shots. Because the calves are under four months old, they get a two mil per calf dose and then obviously in another four weeks they get another two mils. I will also add your cattle do need yearly vaccinations of this five and one to keep um, being protected. You've got to make sure you keep this in the fridge, it needs to stay cool and once it's open you've got to use it up within six weeks time. So we've got to use it again in four weeks but until then we will leave it in our fridge. It's actually real funny sometimes when people come over and open our fridge to get something out and they see like all these vaccines and needles and they're like what the hell is this in your fridge? So we just buy the plain Maltine vaccine, you can also get one with selenium in it, um, you can also get one with B12 in it, but the reason that we choose a plain 5-in-1 is because we've got selenium in our drench, which I'll talk about shortly, um, and also because you need two shots of the 5-in-1, we don't like to buy the one with B12 in it because they don't need two shots of B12, if that makes any sense. So yeah, so we have a plain 5-in-1 vaccine, we have a B12 shot, which I'll talk about really soon. Um, and then we have our drench which has the selenium in it. Now I will just make a comment about the guns that we use, the vaccine gun. Um, I do advise using these, they're actually really cheap, like 20 something dollars and you can get them from the vet or a farmland store. Um, they've got quite a short needle on the end so it just makes it really easy when you're just jabbing the neck. It just, it's a strong short needle so it just goes in and it's really easy. So in the past I used to try and do like fill up a syringe and give the calves two mils each in a syringe with a longer needle and that definitely can be quite challenging. So I definitely reckon that you should invest just a little bit of money and buy one of these guns. It's also handy because all these packs have the attachment for the gun and you just chuck it around your neck and boom, 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 easy as. All right, so now that we've put it all together, we've pretty much just held this up so the liquid comes down and we've just pumped this trigger a few times to let all the air out. So I'm going to be on vaccinating, Jaden is just going to use this rattle. So they're already spray painted a lot because a few weeks ago they had foot rot so I had to spray them um, when I was giving them penicillin. So we're just going to use this rattle, sheep rattle, it's just like a chalk and we just chalk them on their head once I've done their vaccination. I just want to add, I think it makes it easier when you do it while they're on the feeder. You could see when you jab them they kind of freak out and run back a little bit, but it just makes it easier that they can't run forward because uh, they've got the feeder in the way. So yeah, I just think it just makes it a lot easier 
jabbing them all when they're on the feeder and definitely using that rattle, um, the torque straight away. We did try doing it one year without even marking them but um, you could see when you jab them sometimes they run back and go out of place on the feeder. So I do recommend marking them of some sort so you know which ones that you've vaccinated uh, because yeah, it can get uh, confusing and you don't want to give them more than one vaccine. <laughs> time we're giving them the five and one in a different area we will give them a b12 shot so pretty much you give your calves a shot of b12 because a lot of areas are deficient in cobalt in the soil bear in mind they only need one shot of this and then obviously yearly shots of b12 so i said before we don't like to have the b12 in the five and one because they need two five and one shots and only one b12 shot b12 is a little bit more expensive it's around a hundred dollars for a packet of it it doesn't need to be kept in the fridge um, so you can keep it a lot longer and it's quite cool it's red in color if you didn't know all right so next up we're going to be talking about drench so we drench our calves just before they leave the property when they're 12 weeks old so normally when they've been off milk for a few days so apparently when calves are on milk that keeps all the worms at bay so you don't need to drench calves while they're on milk which is why we wait for them to be weaned um, so the drench that we use is Cooper's drench um, called Skanda. I've used this drench every year. I like to give them an oral drench for their first drench. This is a white and a clear drench so it definitely covers a broad spectrum of worms. So the calves get one mil per 10 kg so we give them around 10 mils per calf. So pretty much just take an average weight of all your calves and then that's pretty much what they're going to get drenched. Now when it comes to buying a gun, a lot of these drench guns only come in 8mm sizes which is really annoying if you've got a 100kg calf because they need 10mm. So just make sure you get the one that goes up to 12mm, it just makes it a lot easier. On the back of these guns, if I turn it around, if you can see it, there's this little bit here um, that you can set how many mils you want to give your calves. So yeah, like the vaccination gun, I'd highly recommend investing in a drench gun rather than trying to syringe the drench down your calves throats. I know it sounds crazy but people do do that. This drench gun was $55. So this drench is $180 for two and a half litres but it does last you a long time. I don't think this expires till yeah September 2024. It's definitely cheaper when you buy a bigger bottle. A smaller bottle tends to cost a bit more um, but obviously it depends on how many calves you have. So I found the easiest way to drench your calves is Sometimes I let them kind of suck my fingers so then I can just put the drench gun in their mouth and that seems to work great. I mean, I suppose people have so many different ways of doing it. You can just grab their heads and give them a drench. But yeah, I just find that's just a handy little tip but that you just make them suck your fingers and then put the drench gun in. Um, but you will see, I want to put in a clip now of us drenching the calves. It does look like an absolute fail. The feeder actually fell off when I was doing it. But hey, the job got done so we're all good. So I've always used an oral drench, it's just a lot easier just because the weather's been so unpredictable and when you do use a pour on you just got to be cautious of the rain. So if you give your calves an oral drench um, it's done, you don't need to worry about the weather. When we want to send our calves off they need to be obviously taken down to the yard paddock. Easiest way to move your calves is just to hold the feeder up or hay or anything and just run and they'll chase you. I've actually got a funny clip in here, Jaden's just running with the feeder. Um, and the, all the calves are chasing him and we're just crossing our fingers that they'll all go into the paddock. Yeah. 
Now the fun part, trying to move them down the driveway. Okay, go faster, like just boost. Run! <laughs> Hopefully they freak out and chase him. <laughs> we do things the hard way. I think they're excited having a new paddock, they'll do some zoomies. Definitely ready to go, they're huge. Alright, next up is tagging. Didn't get any footage of us tagging calves unfortunately. It was pouring with rain and just not the ideal situation for a camera. Um, but I thought I'd just show you anyway. This is what the air taggers look like. Um, they're from Allflex. Um, and then this is what a Nate tag looks like. So this is what it looks like up close. What you do is you pretty much put the button in this side, you undo the clip, and then you have this part, which is obviously the stabby part, and you chuck it on there like that. And that's it. So obviously I don't have a calf here at the moment to show you how to tag, but if you do want to see a video of how to tag a calf, then just let me know. I'm happy to do it. Um, but yeah, pretty much that's how you set up the tagger. And then boom, you've got your calf tagged. Now we had about five calves rip their tags out this year. It can happen so easily. Pretty much some of the calves just put their head through the fence, pulled back and then it caught on the wire and ripped out. Can order replacement tags, that's what these are. If your original Nate tag does fall out, so then you just chuck your replacement tag in, date it on the Nate system, um, and then you're good to go. You shouldn't have to worry about Nate tags. Generally, you'll be buying your calves in, they'll already come Nate tags, so you don't have to worry about any of that. It's just if they rip their tags out, which generally one will always do that, then you need to order a replacement tag and tag it yourself. You can order them through Farmlands, Farm Source, any stores like that. Now my favourite part of this video, I'm going to show you my True Test Scanner. Now obviously this video is not sponsored or anything, but I've just got to show you it as an amazing piece of equipment and it's seriously, like, it's seriously a lifesaver. So you saw the amount of numbers on some of those tags and believe me, when I had to try and crouch down and read out those numbers off the tag and Jaden was trying to write it down on a piece of paper, then the piece of paper would get lost and then you can't record it and send it through. It definitely made me frustrated, so I definitely am thankful that I invested my money in getting a Nate tag scanner. We're just going to scan all the tags, make sure we've got 12 um, scanned on here and then later on we'll send it through to the buyer. Right, so we've just selected a new session and now I'm going to start scanning. Sorry about the sun, it's the sun setting. Um, so yeah, we're trying to do this before dark and then these guys are going at half past nine in the morning. when you've scanned it twice, so we're just going to look for that 12th calf and scan it. Yeah, you! It was that one! <laughs> you! So if you can see the screen, it says we've got 12 calves and then all of the um, numbers are recorded, so if you click home, go into your sessions, I'm not sure if this camera is picking this up, session 40, and then there are all your night numbers, so it's really easy. There's actually an app on your phone that you um, set this up to, like you link it to your phone, and then you can just transfer it straight away. Um, so yeah, that is that all done. So I'm really happy with these calves, they are all looking awesome. They're around well, 11 and a half weeks now. Um, so yeah, it's kind of sad to see them go, but then it's also a relief at the same time, so yeah. This guy that bought them buys them off me every year, so it's really, really handy having like a contract. Um, so I know that they're sold, so I know that I'm not stuck with them. Um, but 
Oh, yes, this will be the last time you see this group of cars. We'll say goodbye. Alright, so we have now come inside for this one because obviously this bad boy lives inside. Um, so this is our SRS2 True Test Scanner. It comes in this handy dandy bag. Um, so I will open it up and show you what it looks like. So this is in a wand form. I used to own like this weird little, it looked like a, what did it even look like? Like a walkie talkie thing. Um, but the wand is definitely a lot better because it obviously can reach when your cards are running away and you're trying to scan them. It's obviously got a longer wand so you can easily scan your cards. So I'm not going to go into detail at all on this video about this True Test Scanner. I can do a video on this if you want, but I'm sure there is a lot of videos out there from True Test that shows you how this thing works. Um, but I pretty much just wanted to add this in the video because this thing has been amazing. It just makes the job way easier when you can just scan all the tags. You can pretty much do the Nate transfer in the yard. There's no writing down all those numbers on papers, losing the paper, then yeah, the drama that comes with that. Seriously, I've done that for years. These are not cheap though. I think this one's around $1,200. Um, but obviously I think it's a great investment if you're doing bigger numbers of carbs. Obviously if you're only doing like 5 or 10 carbs then sure. Writing the numbers down, as painful as it is, is pretty, probably the most economical way. Um, it just takes a little bit of time. Um, another thing you can do if you don't have a scanner, instead of writing them down, I would take a photo of the Nate tag rather than trying to hold the calf still and read out all the numbers. You can just take a photo of the tag and then later on punch all those numbers into the computer. Yeah, if you're doing numbers like me, between 40 and 100 cards, say, I definitely recommend buying a scanner. If not true test, I know Gallagher do some good ones as well. Definitely an investment well worth it. So anyway, I'm sitting on my kitchen floor, <laughs> so I might wrap up this video there. I hope it was helpful for you guys, just showing you kind of the products we use and just those little other things that you need to do when you're rearing calves apart from just feeding them milk. Um, there's not a lot to do really, it's just vaccine, drenching and then tagging and scanning. I will do another episode all about the logistics of calf rearing, what it costed us and uh, the profits we made because I know everyone is interested to know that because I mean at the end of the day that's why we're rearing the calves right, to make some money. Um, so all our calves are actually gone now, so I will be doing that video really, really shortly. So definitely subscribe if you haven't already, um, and click that notification bell um, to be updated with when our new videos are up. I hope you guys liked this video, and I'm sure I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!